Hello, I'm Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan and in this video I'll be speaking about some important tips in the case of floppy iris which you find intraoperatively. So first tip is to have a very small side port incision. This reduces the outflow from the side incision and avoids iris damage. Second is main incision should be of adequate depth. If you have a shorter incision, you will have more iris prolapse. Use this OVD Hilux coat which keeps the iris down. It's a heavy OVD, doesn't get aspirated very quickly. And ensure good pre-op dilatation. Some use atropine as well and NSAIDs. It's a good practice if it helps in your case. Doing hydro dissection has to be gentle and controlled. Don't over infuse fluid because uh, if the iris is already floppy, it will prolapse. Now you can see that it looks very innocent at this point because there is no fluid moment across the iris. Many floppy iris cases start off like this with good dilatation of the pupil and uh, if the patient gives particular history of alpha 1 blocker use, you have to be very careful and you should expect some floppiness. So this is the golden period of the surgery where the pupil is still dilated and this is the time you should utilize for doing all the chops or trench divides because once you have nicely divided nucleus, once the floppiness starts like this, you can see here the trouble starts here. If you are already divided the nucleus into small pieces, it's very easy to take it on from there. But if you have undivided nucleus in the bag and the iris starts becoming more and more floppy, then you are in trouble. In such case, I would advise that you use a pupil expansion device. Now you can see in between the, the surgery, you can see the pupil has now started showing the true colors. And looking at the OVD also, it has got aspirated as we moved on to quadrant removal. And once you aspirate the heavy OVD which I have used initially the iris becomes more and more floppy. So the key thing to do here look at this don't cross the midline once you cross the midline you have to be very careful about the iris because because it is floppy it is atonic and the moment the FACO tip goes close to it and you have vacuum there it is going to aspirate the iris as well and the uh, moment you catch the iris it becomes more floppy more atonic so make sure you don't cross the midline be little bit i would say towards the incision from the midline with your FACO pro and keep the FACO tip right steady now this is very important pro withdrawal ritual this is what i call stop the irrigation let some fluid come out make the iac hypotonus and then withdraw the probe and while inserting the probe stop the irrigation make proper insertion and then start the irrigation these two rituals are very very important because they will avoid iris prolapse during the probe insertion and withdrawal and reduces the iris trauma now during the coaxial ia if you don't have to use the side port incision for using the second instrument it's better because there is reduction in the fluid outflow and you can see the pupil behaves normally. Biomanual eye is also a good option because you can keep the irrigation over the iris plane which avoids floppiness. So these are very important tips to follow during the surgery. Here I am going to use a toric IOL and many times if the iris or pupil is too small, I sometimes what I do is that I do additional marks on this IOL centrally you can see my video on toric extension of the toric IOL markings uh, can be used in such cases because most of the times after the IOL insertion you have to remove the pupil expansion devices or iris retractors as well before you start OVD removal so during that time uh, if the IOL rotates you may have to look for the marks under the iris So overall, you can see the surgery went uneventfully. If the pupil was smaller than this, if the nucleus was harder, there was some issues with zonules, which I would have expected. I would have definitely 
went ahead with a pupil expansion device the choice for me is b hex ring you can also use the iris retractors they are very effective particularly if you have weak zonules and you want to examine the periphery in fact iris retractors will be more useful so keep the threshold for using pupil expansion devices very small in case of floppy iris to avoid any injury to ocular structures during the surgery so in this video we saw multiple tips and tricks to tackle a case of floppy iris and uh, i know this was not a very severe case of floppy iris and i didn't have to use any pupil expansion device so i would like to here emphasize a point if you start off the case with a very small pupil say less than 5 4.5 millimeter then it's better that you start off with use of iris retractors or a pupil expansion device because that will make the rest of the manuals quite easy also in between the surgery if you find that the pupil is a uh, very small say less than 3.5 millimeter and it's very difficult to do the manuals use the iris retractors or a pupil expansion device in between and don't think twice about it another important thing which i would like to emphasize is the choice of ovd i use hyalucoat which is 3% chondrite and 4% hyaluronate and it's more viscose than the viscoat so what it does is that it pushes the iris down in the periphery and this ovd is very difficult to aspirate during the procedure it takes time so whenever it is present in the anterior chamber it not only protects the endothelium but also pushes the iris down because it's heavy and it reduces the floppiness of the iris overall another very important tip which i showed is how to withdraw the phaco probe so that is the common time when the iris starts prolapsing out into the wound and gets injured so always stop the irrigation first let some amount of fluid come out of the anterior chamber through the side port incision make the anterior chamber hypotonus a bit of course make sure that posterior capsule doesn't come very close to the phaco tip and then you withdraw the phaco tip and same to be applied for even ia probe so this avoids the getting the iris into the incision and once you avoid that you will find that it's a easier case to tackle there are many more tips and tricks which you will learn on this youtube channel so do subscribe to my youtube channel also if you have anything more to advise our viewers you can write it down in the comments of this video and we are all here to share our experiences and learn from them so thank you so much for watching